Adam, thanks. Richland County is uh, responding rather after WIS investigates found that the county is racking up hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees as the Department of Justice investigates the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. That response comes after the county denied my several interview requests and officials dodged me at a public meeting. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars that council never voted on. Wow. Mr. Walker just came out and got me and asked me to have y'all leave. So we're just, it's a council meeting that's ending. It's a public building. When Richland County hired the two law firms, the county attorney said that the firms would do an internal investigation into the jail. He also said that the firms would assist the Department of Justice in its investigation. But when Cynthia got official documents, the reason why the county hired the firms was redacted. Now, the county's latest statement doesn't clarify what these attorneys are doing or answer any of the questions that I've been asking them for weeks. And one attorney I talked to with the South Carolina Press Association says part of what the county sent in that statement is nonsense. I feel like this is something that the taxpayers need to know about. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars at this point. One of the questions we can't get an answer to, where in the budget is this money coming from? The statement doesn't specifically say whether or not this money is coming from County Attorney Patrick Wright's budget. It just says the county attorney can use money in the budget to hire outside counsel. Through public records, I found these two law firms have billed the county almost $400,000 from November 2023 through April 2024. That time span was five months ago, so that number could be much higher now. And for fiscal year 2023, the county attorney's budget was about $1.2 million. In 2024, they budgeted $1.6 County Councilman Don Weaver, who was the only council member who would talk to us, says while council never voted to hire these attorneys, they did talk about it behind closed doors. The Freedom of Information Act says elected officials can't vote in executive session or even poll members about a course of action. The county now says in this recent statement that Councilman Weaver can't even speak about what happens during those closed door meetings. Jay Bender, an attorney for the South Carolina Press Association, says that statement is nonsense. The council member can come out and discuss anything that was discussed in the executive session. It does not provide a gag order on the participants. And I think the press release by the county is an effort to intimidate Weaver and other council members to keep them from disclosing what was discussed in the executive session. Richland County Code says council must approve services that cost more than $30,000. In this case, there was no public vote. In the statement, without citing specifics, the county says under the state procurement code, Wright doesn't need council approval to hire outside counsel. I reached out to the state fiscal accountability authority to ask them about this. They say the state procurement code does not govern a county, so it's the responsibility of counties to adopt its own code and follow it. Now, Councilman Weaver says he would consider making a motion to vote on the amount of money that they're spending in this situation, so this can all be discussed publicly. You can watch the full investigation on our website. Just go to the WIS Investigates tab.